If you think this one's going to be a 40-something to 40-something shootout, you better check yourself because both the Boilermakers and the Terps are more balanced than you think. Let's preview Purdue, Maryland. Now these are two good quarterbacks. These are two good, very good passing games with Talia Tungavailo on one side, with Aiden O'Connell on the other. But what both of these teams have proven so far this season, they can do it in more ways than just the passing game. Let's look at the running game for both of these teams because we talk about the cradle of quarterbacks at Purdue. What about the stable of running backs at both Purdue and Maryland. Let's start with the Boilermakers. Maybe Devin Mockaby has standed out. Maybe he stood out and maybe he's RB1 right now as King Daru has kind of been on the sidelines. But if he's able to get back, he's able to get healthy. You add in Dylan Downing, transfer Kobe Lewis as well. There's a lot of running backs. I'm re-watching this Purdue-Minnesota game early in the game. Purdue came out and they ran I formation maybe more than I've ever seen them run in I formation. They were committed to the running game. A lot of times that first drive, those first few plays, maybe first drive and a half, two drives or so, a lot of scripted plays. I think Jeff Brom wants to come out and he wants to be committed. And he wants to make a concerted effort to try to have a balanced offense and try to have a running game. Because I think he knows. He saw that four to five minute situation late in the Penn State game. He's like, man, I need a running game. And Purdue has done a good job running the football. Remember, they had more rushing yards than passing yards in that game against Florida Atlantic that Aiden O'Connell was not there for. I think that was the start. Maybe that was the shift. Maybe that's what this Purdue offense needed. They says, you know what? If Aiden's not able to go, we need to be able to do something else on offense. We need to be able to run the football. And they've gotten a lot better at that. Purdue has gotten a lot more physical um, these last couple of weeks, and I really like what they've seen what I've seen at uh, Purdue in the running game. Let's talk about Maryland. Um, Roman Hemby, he's your big play guy. He can bust out 30, 40, 50 yards. Uh, Antoine Littleton, he can get the big, tough yards right when you need it. Colby McDonald can get into the end zone as well. They have, they have themselves. They've got some good running backs as well. This is a balanced offense. And even in the passing offense, Maryland is very offense, um, or very balanced, excuse me, I'll get to that in just a moment. But these are two good teams. That will do more. Look, I don't think we're going to get to 80 combined passes in this game because I honestly think the team that runs the football better is gonna, it might win the game because you keep the ball out of the hands of the other offense, you become more balanced. Okay, let's talk about a couple more things. Let's talk about Maryland on offense. Okay, Maryland's got wide receivers as far as the eye can see, all the way to the Atlantic Ocean, all the way from College Park to the Atlantic Ocean, you, they've got wide receivers. But here's the thing. No wide receiver has really stood out and been a big-time playmaker like they have on the other side. We'll talk about that in just a moment, right? None of these wide receivers rank in the top 10 in any major Big Ten statistical category right now. It's a lot of even distribution to guys like Deshaun Jones, um, Dante Demas, Jacob Copeland, Rakeem Jarrett. There's a lot of guys involved in this offense, which is a good thing. I don't think that's a bad thing, that necessarily one guy isn't exploding um, like you maybe expect in this Maryland offense. But there's a lot of even distribution, which makes things very difficult um, for uh, the defense that's defending um, against Maryland. So I think Maryland obviously has one of the better offenses um, in the Big Ten right now. Let's talk about their defense. Uh, their defense has done a pretty good job defending the pass the last couple of games. Uh, even though they got ran over in the running game uh, by Michigan, they've defended the pass, both Michigan and Michigan State. They've held them uh, to, I believe, under 250 yards, so they're containing the passing game right now, which, of course, is going to be a big key when you're taking on the Purdue Boilermakers. And when you talk about that Maryland defense, you got to defend against the probably, maybe, may one of the best. One of the best players on the field, definitely the best wide receiver on the field, is Charlie Jones. Charlie Jones leads the Big Ten in reception. He leads the Big Ten in receiving yards. He leads the Big Ten in receiving touchdowns. I'm pretty sure he's ranked at the top in the country in some of those statistical categories as well. So Maryland is going to have to shadow their defense in the direction of Charlie Jones. Now the last two games, defenses have played pretty well against Charlie Jones. Right, because before the Florida Atlantic and before the Minnesota game, Charlie Jones over 100 yards and at least one touchdown in every single game. The big question is, can Charlie Jones get back to that level? Can, because 
I think I think Maryland's going to have a better offense than Minnesota did uh, the other week without Mo Ibrahim. I think this is a Maryland offense that's going to have to move. That's or that's going to move the football. That's going to put points on the board. Um, can Charlie Jones and this Purdue offense keep up? Is Charlie Jones going to need to have a big day for Purdue um, to be able to win this game? I think he's going to have to have a decent day. I think he's going to have to be better than he has played against Florida Atlantic um, and that he played against Minnesota. He might have to have a 100-yard day for Purdue uh, to come out on top, but the big question is that I was getting to was can Maryland shadow their defense in the direction of Charlie Jones to try to keep him at bay. And if you do that, there's a lot more weapons on this offense. TJ Sheffield, Payne Durham, not sure if Brock Thompson um, is, is going to go, but there are weapons. And Aiden O'Connell, you know he's going to find them, especially when he's got a better running game and the defense has to remain more honest. This Purdue team is going to have weapons if you shadow Charlie Jones. And he proved last week. Okay? He proved last week. This Purdue team is more than just Aiden O'Connell to Charlie Jones. Just like, just like last year, it was more than just Aiden O'Connell to David Bell. Okay, this is a team now that's got a solid running game, that's got other guys in the passing game. Maryland has to be aware of all facets of this uh, Purdue offense. Otherwise, you're going to end up like, like Minnesota. You know, you're going you're gonna to be on the losing end of this football game. Now, I do believe Purdue is going to have to have a better game offensively than they did against Minnesota. Minnesota is one of the best defenses um, in the entire Big Ten. But Purdue's got to have a bigger day, and I think they will have a better day against this Maryland defense. Let's talk about defenses for a minute, because there's one key factor in here that kind of skews me in favor of Purdue. Purdue is great at taking the football away. They're top three in the Big Ten right now in takeaways, internal, I should say, interceptions um, this season. Seven interceptions this year. Two of them have gone back for touchdowns. So they are ball hawks, and they can take the football away. We know in some bigger games in the past, Talia Tungavailoa has been prone to throw some interceptions. So is Purdue going to disguise their coverage? Are they going to try to bring pressure to, or to, to pressure Talia Tungavailoa to make some of those bad and poor decisions? That's going to be something to keep an eye on. That's a, that's a key factor into this one, protecting the football for Maryland. If they protect the football, they're going to remain remain in this game. But man, if you allow, man, Purdue's already tough enough. If you got a touchback and you put them at the 20, 25 yard line, but now you give them a short field, they take the football away. They've done it really good this year. That's going to skew things um, in favor of the Purdue Boilermakers. Here's a fun fact: these are the two least penalized teams um, in the Big Ten Conference. Can they remain that way? It, you know, it's, it's football. It's whoever turns the football over the least, whoever stays. Um, discipline and doesn't commit the most penalties, uh, I think is going to have a really good shot in this football game. But this is going to be a really good game. I think this is one of the better games, maybe the best competitive matchup um, in the Big Ten Conference this week. And I could see it going any which way. Huge game. I look at Purdue's remaining schedule. If they are able to get by Maryland, you look at their losses. Two ranked teams. They lost to a top 10 Penn State team. They lost really close to a Syracuse team that's now in the top 25. Purdue, they get everybody healthy. That's a team to watch in the West. Now that Wisconsin has kind of taken a dip, Nebraska's not as good as we thought they um, were going to be. Minnesota, they already beat Minnesota. Illinois is later on this year. Purdue might be that team that can get on a roll here late in the season. And Maryland, if they're able to win this one, watch out for the Terps as they keep on gaining confidence. Let me know your thoughts on this matchup. Who you got, what's the score, all that kind of stuff in the comments below and make sure you subscribe to Big Ten Ted. I'm Big Ten Ted and we'll see you in the next one.